So now we're finally getting somewhere. We've learned geometry and resolution. We've got some DynaMesh going. Now let's learn how to manipulate our meshes a little bit better. We've oriented ourselves in space. We've got our floor plane here. So essentially we've got a head sitting on a floor. We're looking Z forward. This blue line is forward. We can also use our cam view up here as an indicator. And once you're oriented, you don't need you know these visual representations. You can turn the floor off. And if you're not accustomed to like going up here and navigating, which generally speaking I'm not, you can go in here to preferences, go in here to cam view and just turn that cam view off if you want. If you never want to see it on, you just turn cam view off. And then again, go up here to config and just hit store config. And now cam view won't be on unless you specifically go in here and say, turn my cam view on. While we're talking about cam view real quick, you can go ahead and make the size bigger or smaller. You can go in here next and choose a different cam view. You can also make custom cam views. But for now what I'm going to do is just turn the cam view off and we'll go ahead and just store that config. So again to orient yourself in space without the cam view you can just quickly turn the floor on. Make sure your blue line is forward. You're sitting on top of the floor plane here and you're good to go. Now we've already touched on this a bit but let's back up and we'll start from the beginning. We already have our divider double clicked over here, these little double arrows here. So I'm going to take this transform menu, click the white button, take the brush menu, and finally dock that over here to the left. Incidentally, if I always want ZBrush to open up just like I have it, again, preferences, store config, OK. And now when I open up ZBrush, this docking menu will already be open. My brush menu will be over here. My tool menu will be over here. And I can get started. So now by default, when you're in ZBrush, your standard brush, again, with the dot stroke, is probably going to be what you start with. And it's a good brush to talk about basic brush behavior. So let's zoom in a little bit on our mesh here. And if we just start sculpting on our mesh, the default behavior is for it to kind of push along the surface that exists. So you can see as we start sculpting, again, we can go up here to the draw size, make our draw size bigger. And because we're using a tablet, we have tablet pressure, so we're able to kind of, you can just barely press on your tablet and you get a very soft stroke. Or you can press very hard on your tablet and it'll really affect your mesh. But again, we're using, by default, standard brush has Z add selected up here. And what that's telling ZBrush is for this brush, go ahead and push away from the surface normal. If I go up here and turn on Z sub and I push on my mesh, that's going to cut in. Now instead of always constantly having to go up here and do Z add Z sub all the time, the better way to do that is to have Z add just turned on and that's the default behavior. So we're going to go through here and we'll start sculpting our head. And then if I want to cut into my mesh, I'm going to hold down the alt key. When I do that, you're going to see on my cursor there, there's a little minus sign. That's giving you a visual indication that we're actually going to push in to our object. We're using the alternative or Z sub without having to go up there and actually push the Z sub button. Now remember we have Dynamesh turned on. So as I'm going through here, if I turn on polyframe, you know these, these polygons are getting a little bit twisted. Just control drag in your document and it'll redistribute that geometry. So we've got the standard brush. We're using Z add and Z sub by holding down alt to cut in and letting go of Alt to kind of sculpt out away from our mesh here. And there's another one here. If you hold down Shift, it's, the cursor is going to turn blue. And you're also going to notice up here in your brush palette, it's going to switch from your standard brush to the smooth brush. Now there's a lot of different smooth brushes you can choose from, just like there's a lot of different brushes you can choose from. Uh, but the default smooth brush, if you just hold down Shift and just drag over your mesh, you're going to see it's going to essentially smooth those verts that make up your mesh. Again, if we turn on the polyframe and zoom in, all we're doing is manipulating all of these points, edges, and faces that make up this object. So again, we can sculpt out. We can hold down Alt to sculpt in. Control drag to redyna mesh, and then hold down Shift to smooth. Now, when I say hold down shift to smooth, what I mean is hold down shift and then touch your mesh and that will do a mesh smooth. Now, if you hold down shift, start smoothing and let go of shift, but continue to kind of rub the tablet so it affects your mesh, that's going to do a secondary smooth algorithm. 
where it kind of pushes the points across the volume that you have. That can come in handy if you come into any areas where your mesh doesn't smooth very predictably or if you don't want to smooth the volume. You can see if I hold down shift and smooth it kind of really melts the forms of your mesh. If you hit control Z, hold down shift and then let go of shift and continue smoothing, you're gonna see it redistributes or smooths the points over the existing volumes. So it'll still smooth but still maintain your volumes. However, if you tap on your mesh first and start sculpting and then hold down shift, what you're gonna see is there's a line that gets drawn out. If I let go of shift, it's gonna basically shoot that brush back to that point. This is just an easy way, it's hit control Z. I'm gonna make my brush size really small and I'm also gonna take my Z intensity and crank that up. So now when I sculpt with this, you're gonna see it gives me a very intense stroke if I turn my Z intensity down and do the exact same thing, it gives me a very light stroke. Now, of course, you can also use your tablet pressure. So if you just barely touch your tablet, it'll give you a light stroke. And then if you barely touch your tablet and then kind of lean in on your tablet, it'll go from light to heavy, but it's gonna max out at about that much. If I take my Z intensity and crank it up to 100 and then go very light stroke to very heavy stroke, you're gonna see it starts out kind of heavy and then gets really heavy and kind of caps out at that much. So Z intensity is a way where you can control how much of your geometry is displaced when you're using that brush. Generally speaking, I'll keep this at about 30 for my standard brush. Now we've talked about basic standard brush and of course a smooth brush, which is basically just holding down shift when you're using any brush and you can smooth your mesh. There's a couple really useful brushes that you probably want to add to your arsenal. I may be thinking, well, I've got a lot of brushes in here. If I just hit the B key on my keyboard, these are just default brushes that get loaded into the ZBrush, as well as if we hit the comma key on our keyboard and go to the brush tab, there's even more brushes in here you can choose from. But again, we're starting out simple. We're just getting used to the basics of ZBrush. So for our standard brush, this is a really good one for kind of carving in and sculpting out our mesh here. And again, you can tap S on your keyboard to bring up your draw size, hold down shift to smooth, hold down alt to carve in. But let's say we wanted to like pull out kind of a jaw shape right now. The face kind of follows the trajectory of that sphere and our face just kind of melts off here. A good brush for this is to hit B M V that goes into our move brush. So if we hold down shift and snap this to the side, let's make our brush size, let's tap S and make our brush size bigger. I'm gonna take this whole bottom part of the face and just pull it out into kind of a face shape. So now you can see, I can go through and very quickly start manipulating very large portions of our mesh here. And again, you can tap S to make your draw size smaller, or go up here to your draw size, and you can manipulate smaller areas of your mesh and then you can also tap S to make your draw size even larger. And again, you're always working in the round because this is 3D, so you wanna kind of go through and evaluate your mesh from all sides. And there we have a basic face. So now what we can do is we can go back to our standard brush, B, S, T. And you can also notice as you're choosing new brushes out of here, you can go through here in this brush palette and just like when we were making or selecting new tools, it's kind of piling them up over here. Same thing in your brush palette. If you want to choose the move brush, just go up here and tap the small move, standard brush, they're all right here. So we'll go ahead and tap the standard brush here. Again, we can hold down Alt. So just using our standard brush, letting go of Alt, holding down Alt, tapping S to increase our brush size going over here to our move brush. And then because we have geometry dynamesh, control drag to redistribute our geometry, you can very quickly start fleshing out a face. Now, similar to the standard brush, there's another brush I like to use. I'm gonna hit B, D, and there's a damn standard brush in here. And essentially what that introduces is the idea of an alpha. So it's a standard brush 
with a dot stroke, but now we have an alpha in here. So if we go through here, let's make our draw size a little bit bigger by tapping S and then bringing our draw size up. Now when we go through here, let's say we want to kind of put a fold around the nose, maybe start drawing a mouth in here. You're going to see I get a much finer line. So here's my standard brush. And if I go to the Damien standard brush, there's no alpha in there. Go to Damien standard and go through here, you're going to see I get a much finer line. Now there's some other brush settings that are happening in here, but essentially, if we undo that, both of those, if we go back into our standard brush, let's go into our alpha here. And there's actually the standard Damien standard brush alpha sitting in here, but you can also see we've got a bunch more alphas in here. But if we choose that brush alpha and then use the standard brush, and on this one we want to hold down Alt. By default it's Z add. If you hold down Alt, you're going to see it kind of punches in. And you're also going to see, as I'm using this one, it kind of leaves dots behind. If you want to change that, uh, we'll skip ahead a little bit. You can go in here to Stroke, open up your Lazy Mouse, and change this Lazy Step to like 0 0.05, very small number, and that'll give you that result. Now, something important to notice here, uh, with Standard Brush, the default is Z Add. So you're going to see when I use this, it pulls out by default. However, when I go to the Damien Standard Brush, or DAM standard for short, uh, and I use that, you're going to see Z sub is on by default, and that's totally fine. Depending on the type of brush you make, the default behavior may be Z sub. When most people use Damien standard, they probably go through here and want to cut in with their Damien standard. And that's not to say you can't go in here and hold down Alt and kind of pull up to a ridge if you wanted to. For example, on the sides of the nose here, or on the cheekbones. But again, most people when using the Damien Standard Brush are probably going to cut in first and then use Alt as an alternate method to kind of carve in. Now you're going to notice when I'm holding down Alt, I pulled up a ridge and I can go back to my Standard Brush and I can build up to this ridge. Uh, of course, we need to reset this one. If you want to, you can go in here to Brush, down here at the bottom say reset current brush, that'll bring the standard brush back to its default. And now we can use this to kind of build up to that ridge. Another really good brush for building up forms, if we hit B, C, L, that's the clay brush. So we go back up here, you're gonna see we have clay brush available for us. And we can actually go through here, and this is a good brush again for just building up nice volumes through here. And so instead of using the standard brush, this one's a little broader. And just like any other brush, you can hold down Alt, in this case, it's going to dig in. So we're going to go through here with our clay brush. We're just going to kind of go through and build up some volumes and hold down up Alt to kind of take some volumes down. And again, right along this ridge here, you can either build up the nose or again, hold down Alt and knock that back. Now, a similar brush to the clay brush, if you hit B, C, you can see we have a bunch of clay brushes in here and there's uh, clay buildups right next to there. So BCB and also if you hit your comma key, again like we mentioned there's other brushes in here. We can't, we can't cover all these brushes. I'm going to give you the basics to kind of get started with. But even in here there's multiple clay brushes that you can kind of play around with. But let's go ahead and hit our comma key. Uh, clay buildup is similar to the clay brush but it has a square alpha. So we've kind of touched a little bit on alphas before with our Damien standard brush. And what the alpha does is essentially turn it from, if we turn this alpha off, it's kind of got a soft round fall off. Turn the alpha on, now it has a more controlled buildup. Again, because we're using that square alpha to kind of control that brush stroke. So you can use this to kind of go through and build up forms as well. Or hold down Alt and knock back forms. So we'll go through here on the side and maybe use this to kind of build up a little bit of a jaw here. And of course we can always go back in here and hold down shift to smooth all this back out. And also remember you can always go back into your move brush and make pretty drastic changes if this jaw is a little bit intense for you. Go through here, uh, hold down tap S to go into your brush size or go up here to your draw size here. You go through and you make, again, some fairly drastic changes. You know, we can go from kind of an angry brow to more of a 
pensive look. We can bring this jaw way in. We can make this mouth size much more smaller and pinched. We can go from kind of a melancholy face to a little bit more of a happy face just by using that move brush. Similar to the move brush, and this is one we've touched on just a bit, hit BSH to go into your snake hook brush. And this one's going to allow you to kind of pull out as you go, but it'll also act as an alternative for the move brush. In fact, some people prefer to use the snake hook brush. This gives you a little bit more directionality than the move brush might. Another really fun one. Let's hit B, P, I for the pinch brush. And you can use this to, if you make your brush size really big, you can pinch entire features down. So you can go through here and you can kind of pinch this nose down, pinch this mouth down. And interestingly enough, this Alt, when you hold down Alt with the pinch brush, doesn't really seem to change the behavior all that much. So generally speaking, the pinch brush is just going to draw verts together. Now you can do this over broad areas, like we can pinch this entire nose section just by making the brush size large, or if you want to make the brush size very large, you can pinch the entire face in, or you can make it small and you can pinch right along this edge here and kind of define borders of volumes. Now when you do that, if you turn on the polyframe, you're going to see we are stressing that geometry quite a, quite a bit, but of course you can just control drag, redynamesh your mesh, and that'll redistribute your geometry. Now at that point, if I hit Control Z, you're going to see we have some nice detail built in. You may feel at this point to go ahead and say, hey, you know what, let's keep some of that resolution in my face. We'll put this up to like 200. Control drag, and now we can maintain some of that detail. Speaking of cleaning up borders, we can also go in here and hit B, H, P, and that's your H polish brush. And what that's going to do is allow you to kind of run your brush across a surface of a mesh and really kind of polish that surface. Now there is an alternative here, so if you hold down Alt, that'll kind of pull out toward a surface, and if you let go of Alt, it'll push in. So if you see yourself kind of getting towards an edge and you're using Alt and it's starting to cut into this side, consider holding down Alt, and that'll polish up to that surface. So what I do with the H polish brush is let go of Alt and hold down Alt and kind of alternate between those to get the effect that I want. And again, I can go down here and I can hold down Alt. And if I just can't quite get that form I was looking for, I can switch back to that Damien Standard brush, go through here and cut this in, and then hold down Alt to kind of pull along a ridge, go back to our clay brush, and kind of build out to those forms again, and then head back into our H Polish brush and define those planes. Again, holding down Alt and letting go of Alt. And very quickly you can start again really defining where these forms go. Now, getting a little bit into these brush modifiers here, if you go into, well, not to the brush modifiers necessarily, but brush samples, you're going to see there's a preserve edge on the H polish. Now there's another brush that kind of complements the H polish brush. Let's go to BT D, that's trim dynamic. And on this one, you're going to see preserve edge is set to one. So if I switch between H polish and trim dynamic here, you're going to see preserve edge goes way up on H polish. And what that's doing is allowing this brush to see an edge while you're sculpting and go, you know what? I'm going to preserve that edge. As I'm going through in sculpting, I'm going to make sure if I see an edge, I'm going to try to preserve it. And that allows this H polish brush to really go through and again define these angle changes on these forms. Trim Dynamic has Preserve Edge set to 1, and you're going to see if I go along this edge with Trim Dynamic, it's going to bevel it right in. It's not going to preserve any edges, but it will allow you to go across those edges and define a new form or a new plane change, which you can now go in with your H Polish brush and refine that new plane change. So now the H Polish brush is going to see two new edges, this one at the top, and this one at the bottom, and you can now polish in between those. So this is another really good way, Trim Dynamic and H Polish and Damien Standard, to go through here and start again defining where changes are, going through and defining where your volumes are, using your clay brush to go through and kind of build up forms or your clay build up, or holding down Alt to kind of dig in. 
using your Damien standard or your standard brush to dig in using your move brush or your snake hook brush to go through here and move your volumes around and again you can always tap S and re try out your draw size so you can affect larger areas of your mesh or bring this into attack to affect smaller areas. Hold down shift to smooth out. If you want to smooth along these edges, again, just hold down shift. Put a nice smooth along here. Let's say you wanted to define those planes, but then maybe go through and soften these out. Maybe go hit through here with your trim dynamic. Kind of knock these edges back. You've already found your planes and now you want to refine them a bit more. And then of course, you can always go back in here in your standard brush, hold down Alt, and kind of start pushing that inwards. And also remember, like say you're using the clay buildup, if you want to really crank up with that Z intensity, that'll really go through and make plane changes. If you want to, you can also turn down that Z intensity and kind of go across the forms and use this as a way to kind of softly and gently build up volumes. And even when you're using your smooth brush, if you go through here and you smooth, and it's like, ah, oh, it's smoothing too much, you can hold down shift and then bring your Z intensity down, and now you'll smooth uh, just a little bit less. You can also use your tablet pressure to kind of put a little feather touch on that smooth, but always remember when you hold down shift, this is going to give you access to your smooth intensities. So you can go through here and, you know, keep this up at 100 or drop this down to a lower number there. Now you may notice as you're using these brushes and you hover over this, you're gonna see there's a base type. So the clay buildup and the clay brushes are all base type clay. The standard brush and the dam standard brush or the Damien standard brush are both base type standard. So those are the kind of the parent or the archetype brushes that all these brushes are based off of. And like I said before, there's a ton of brushes in here. There's all sorts of really crazy cool things you can do, but that should be enough to get you started. You'd be surprised what you can make with just these brushes, a little bit of DynaMesh, and just having a little bit of fun in ZBrush.